Hello, we're back in Pleasant View, and today it's time to rejoin Andrea Cormier and finish up her day. And as we know, she lives over here in her condo. So let's rejoin the family. So we're back in the Cormier household, and we will continue where we left off. And that was Andrea getting back from her community lot. So she's going back to work right now as an elementary school teacher. But before that, I will give you a quick reminder of her character. So she is a Capricorn. Let's zoom in on her first. There she is. A Capricorn and her hobby is film and literature. She is a fortune sim with a lifetime wish to earn 100,000 simoleons. And she has written two books so far. Swallows Fall and Dusk Rose. And her second, secondary aspiration is romance. So she likes writing romance novels. <laughs> um, and uh, she is sisters with Ricky Cormier. And she has little Irene together with uh, her husband, Jason Cormier. Uh, and he was, of course, previously Jason Menon. And she also has Nassim together with uh, Abjit Bertino. So, Andrea is a very lucky sim, one could say. <laughs> she has always had a very easy time to get what she wants. And um, she's one of those people who did really well in school as a kid and didn't really have to work that hard to achieve what she wanted. She was always very admired by her teachers as a good kid who <laughs> was kind to others and did well and uh, she got a very good reputation early on from that. Her parents were very ambitious and they had her when they were quite old so when they had Ricky who is quite a bit younger than Andrea is they were even older and uh, Andrea became a little bit of a um, mother figure for Ricky <laughs> as a teenager um, and as he was growing up. So um, moving on to college, Andrea kept in close contact with Ricky and uh, sadly enough it didn't take long before their father passed away from old age and um, as Andrea finished up her studies and eventually became um, employed, their mother also was uh, moved to a retirement home. And uh, Ricky actually moved in with Andrea instead as a teenager. So he lived in this house as well, growing up with Andrea. And um, he actually also stayed here for most of his college years. So it wasn't until Ricky had uh, grown up into an adult that he moved out into his own place. And uh, Andrea could focus more on her own life. <laughs> That was around the time when she also took over the, uh, the elementary school in Pleasant View. So sadly, their mother has also passed away. So these two are now the only Cormiers in this neighborhood. Looking at Andrea's love life, she was involved with Abhijit for a while. That was when she was uh, quite young. And um, was just starting off her adult life. And uh, she had a very romantic uh, view of Abjit Because he is a charmer, definitely. <laughs> and um, she didn't really know that he was seeing other women. Uh, he didn't really lie about it. But he hadn't really let her know either. So there was some miscommunication between those two. And uh, being quite young and inexperienced, Andrea was a bit blinded <laughs> by her um, romantic heart. So once she found out that Abhijit was meeting other people, she was um, devastated and heartbroken, heartbroken. She actually had a day off and went to see Abhijit to surprise him. But uh, once she got to his apartment, she found some Sandy Bruti over there. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, she still hates Sandy with a passion, of course. And um, 
One thing that complicated matters was also that uh, Andrea had become pregnant. And when she found out that Abjit was uh, actually seeing other women on the side, she just cut all ties with him and um, decided to actually keep the baby because she had been very, very happy to get a child of her own. She has always loved children, loved to have kids around to teach and rear and uh, help grow into successful adults. So uh, she actually decided to keep the baby and um, Nassim was born, but he never had any contact with his father growing up. So Andrea became a very successful and uh, admired single mother in the neighborhood. And um, there's a lot of people looking up to her, uh, being the elementary school teacher and uh, a role model for all the little kids growing up in this neighborhood. So after a while of uh, living alone, and um, I think it was when, when Nassim had grown into a child, she started going out with uh, Jason instead. And uh, Jason had a bit of a reputation, <laughs> but... Andrea, on the other hand, had, had a very good reputation. So those two together was a very unlikely pair. But Andrea really gave Jason the ability that he needed in his life. And uh, in turn, Jason brought some excitement and romance into <laughs> Andrea's life. So those two hit it off quite well, even though they are very different from each other. So right now, Andrea is living in this uh, very beautiful house together with the family and she has also had a daughter with her husband and she just uh, has settled down and doesn't want to change a thing. She is very happy where she is right now. Then we have Jason, Andrea's husband. He is a fortune sim and his hobby is music and dance. He is a Scorpio, so very active and very grouchy and serious. <laughs> he's uh, a bit more fit than he's overweight. And his secondary aspiration is popularity. And he dreams of becoming a rock god. So Jason is best friends with Amin Miguel. But he doesn't really get along with his stepson, Nassim. <laughs> So Jason actually lived in Sim City growing up and um, he has always been a bit of a wild child <laughs> who's, who goes his own way and doesn't uh, listen to authority. And uh, he's the type of person that uh, either likes you very much or dislikes you with a passion. <laughs> so Jason has had a very hard time getting along with a lot of people in his life. It was in his college years that he met Amin, and uh, that was when he also met Marissa Bendet. And they hit it off really, really well, and actually became engaged to be married. But Marissa eventually moved back to Pleasant View, and that was when Jason decided that he too would move here. But they didn't really move in together, because Marissa was uh, roommates with uh, Melissa Fancy and uh, Sandy Bruti for a while. So Jason actually moved in uh, in another apartment and uh, tried his luck to make things work in Pleasant View. And moving here, he uh, actually met Christy Stratton after a while and decided that uh, he was going to try to go out with her instead. <laughs> And um, unfortunately, Christy and Marissa were neighbors. So, of course, Marissa found out. <laughs> and yeah, Jason really broke her heart. That was a time uh, in his life when he didn't really care that much about other people. He was very down on his luck and he had a lot of people around him who intensely disliked him. And uh, moving to Pleasant View... Things hadn't really gone the way that he thought that they would. He hadn't been that successful. And uh, again, he had met a lot of people that he didn't get along with. 
And as it turned out, even though he moved on from Marissa to Christy, he didn't get along with Christy's family. He was intensely disliked by her little sister, Meadow, and uh, even though he moved in with them, um, Christy turned out to be a very conservative person <laughs> because even though Jason tried to persuade her into being romantic and woohoo and make out and do all of those things even though they weren't uh, married or even engaged. Christy ended up rejecting him over and over again and saying that she wanted to wait until marriage and Jason just realized that uh, things weren't going to work out for him and uh, Christy wasn't the person that he thought that she was. So Jason ended up uh, being a very lonely and very disliked person and um, tried to get successful in the music business and things just weren't working out for him. So that was the state of mind that he was in when he met Andrea. And um, surprisingly enough, she was uh, a very cool person, even though she was very strict and had a very good reputation and like a good girl <laughs> she actually had a uh, an exciting side to her that drew Jason to her and uh, they hit it off really really well and uh, eventually uh, moved in together now Nassim was very used to having his mother to himself so he disliked Jason on sight <laughs> So those two have never really gotten along, even though Jason doesn't really dislike Nassim. He, he would like to get to know him better and become friendlier with him. But um, as long as Nassim doesn't want to, that's not going to happen, I think, sadly. So moving in in this house and uh, getting a more stable life and eventually becoming neighbors with his best friend as well, Jason started to perform a bit at weddings in the neighborhood and uh, that in combination with his relationship with Andrea moved his reputation up quite a bit so people don't really dislike him <laughs> as much right now they're just uh, a bit wary of him I think. Jason and Andrea also decided to get engaged and got married even though Andrea is a faithful sim Jason is an atheist so they did just decided to not have a church wedding, but they, they just got married with friends and family. A very small ceremony, but it was uh, very romantic and uh, it suited them well. I think that Jason also was a bit uh, sick and tired of church weddings, <laughs> seeing as he uh, often performs at them as well. So Jason uh, was overjoyed to get a little daughter and... Uh, yeah, he has really settled down into this family. He's now trying to work out things with Nassim, but otherwise he's very, very happy where he is. Next we have Nassim, and uh, <laughs> I ended up uh, pausing at a very nice pose, I think. <laughs> Let's just go with it. Um, he is a knowledge Sim, and he is a um, Sagittarius. Extremely grouchy but also extremely active and playful. He's very fit and his hobby is sports. He doesn't have a secondary aspiration yet and uh, his current uh, wish is to <laughs> become uh, successful in the entertainment career, but I think that that might uh, change as he grows older. He is currently in a... Well, he's not in a relationship with her, but uh, he has a crush on Jolie Brutti although they're not uh, in love yet. He's also very close to Hecuba Goth, and um, she actually had a crush on him uh, before, but uh, when he... He, didn't, he never looked at her that way, and uh, once he started going out with Julie, um, Hecuba was a bit angry with him. <laughs> but of course he doesn't know that. He's also pretty close with his uncle, Ricky, and he has recently started to rekindle his relationship with his uh, biological father. Now, Andrea kept him away from Abhijit uh, 
all up until he became a teenager. That was around the time when Nassim started to ask about his father and wanted to know more. And that was when Andrea started to bury the hatchet and uh, rekindle a relationship with um, with Abjit, a friendly one that is. And that was when she introduced those two to, uh, with each other. So Nassim uh, has started to um, spend a bit more time with uh, Abjit. They um, play video games together <laughs> when they meet up and... Um, he also knows his uh, half-brothers, Oliver and uh, Orlando. Orlando is, of course, his homeroom teacher right now. So they meet uh, a bit more often. And uh, yeah, he, he dislikes Jason in, with a passion. <laughs> and that's actually the game's doing, really. Um, I think that it is because uh, he recognizes uh, Abrit as his real father and he doesn't like uh, that his mother is uh, romantic with someone else. But I read that as um, Nassim really being a uh, mommy's boy. <laughs> like um, those two were alone for a very long time. Um, Nassim really grew up with only her around and uh, I think that once uh, a male figure or a father figure was introduced into his life, he really did not like that. <laughs> he didn't. Uh, he was very accustomed to just having his mother around, and he's very protective of her. So having another man in the house, and also Jason, who didn't really have a good reputation, <laughs> particularly um, introduced into the house. Nassim really didn't take kindly to that. So yeah, we will have to see how those two get along in future. And uh, we will see how Nassim turns out. <laughs> if he gets a bit, bit more agreeable or if he will stay with a more tough personality. Then we have little Irene. And she is a Scorpio, like her father. But she's a lot more nice than he is. And her hobby is science. So yeah, uh, she's just close with her family right now and um, Irene is a bit of a spoiled child. She's the type of kid that um, really enjoys uh, having her mother in the position in school <laughs> that she has. So she's very likely to sneak into the teacher's office and use the bathroom and just um, brag about <laughs> being the... Um, the elementary school teacher's um, daughter and um, being very proud of her family. Um, but she's uh, coming from a good place and she wants to get along with other kids her age. So I think that uh, it would be nice to work a bit on getting a friend for her <laughs> to connect with. And then we have the family dog, Jake, who is uh, a little rescue dog that the family adopted not too long ago so he's a bit of a dofus <laughs> he's pretty lazy and uh, he's also a pig pen so he's quite a character uh, but he's a very very gentle and kind dog and he's uh, quite young still so it's a little bit until he grows up into an elder and that was uh, all of them so I think that I'm going to start off the day Jason is going to go to his job as a roadie. So he's going to uh, drive to work pretty soon. And uh, Andra is just going to leave for work for real this time. I'm just going to let time move on until it's uh, seven. And uh, these guys should get ready for school as well. I think that uh, Nassim can use the bathroom and then see if he can get some nice breakfast. And it uh, looks like Irene is um, saying good morning to her father. <laughs> yeah, so Jason is going to drive to work and Andrea is as well. She's going to 
drop off the newspaper on the second floor, it looks like. I see. Might wanna might wanna add actually an OMSP so that they can uh, drop the newspaper off on the desk instead. So let's grab this one for tables. I think that should be fine. So let's just check with the the new newspaper what it looks like. Yeah, that's fine. Very good. Oh, you're just gonna drop it off on the floor. Okay. <laughs> that's silly. Let's just put it in here. Oh, oh no, Irene is sick with the flu. Hmm. Well, she's on her way to school right now. I think I'm just gonna send her. Um, and we'll see how she feels when she gets back. But I'm gonna write that down in my spreadsheet that she is uh, sick. Okay then, and it looks like Nassim decided to um, play the guitar. I think that I have... Um, no music for me, thanks. Yeah, I do. I think it's a, a mod conflict that uh, makes it not work for me. Okay, so it looks like Andrea isn't leaving. Okay, we have that issue here too. So let's just have um, a salami sandwich. Why not? <laughs> just gonna supervise the sims to make sure that they um, make it to work. Looks like there are some routing issues up here. But Andrea sent her away anyway. It's just Jason who is struggling. You don't need to shoot hoops right now. Um, that's fine. Let's just use the bathroom. Great, so the parents are leaving and the kids will soon be going off to school as well. And here comes the school bus. Yep, so Nasim and Irene are going off to school and we will meet the family back once everybody's back again. <laughs> okay, we have a chance card for Jason. While the band performs on stage, Jason and his co-workers take a break backstage after the exhausting work of stage setup. Suddenly, a frantic voice chimes in on the walkie-talkie. One of the speakers hanging above the stage is about to break loose. To make matters worse, the lead guitarist has just begun his solo and he's standing underneath the speaker. Jason can risk his life and try to refasten the chains holding onto the speaker. Or he can interrupt the band and warn them of the strip off the stage. Time is running out. Oh wow. Quick decisions Jason. Um, I think that Jason is a bit adventurous um, and even though he would have the confidence to interrupt the concert definitely, um, I think that he would actually climb into the rafters. Though the others urge Jason to just interrupt the concert, he refuses and says, you can't stop the rock, <laughs> before climbing into the rafters. While working on refastening the chain connected to the speaker, the lead guitarist enters the best part of his solo and distracts Jason enough that he janks on the chain. The speaker falls to the stage, luckily missing the guitarist and crushing his amp instead. Silence rips through the auditorium. And all eyes are on Jason. When Jason climbs down from the rafters, the band's manager meets him with some harsh and unfortunate words. Jason has been demoted. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, Jason. Well, that's just uh, Jason's luck, I guess. He tries his best, but even though he <laughs> tries to <laughs> get things done, Things just never seem to pan out well for him. <laughs> so he is now 
uh, Battle of the Bands judge. Yeah, so he has a bit more uncomfortable work hours then. Yep, that's just the way things are for Jason. <laughs> so at least he got the day off. Uh, or, well, yeah, the day off. So let's just make the best of it. <laughs> Let's just grab a ham sandwich. Okay, so um, Jason is a bit upset about his demotion. And I think he's more frustrated, actually, more than um, sad about it. Just because he was genuinely trying to do well. <laughs> and... Uh, He's just so sick and tired of uh, these kinds of things happening to him. And now that he's alone in the house, no one's around, he can take down that, that hard wall he carries around. And actually shed some tears. So I think that Jason is going to freshen up a bit. And then he's going to spend his day on some community lot. He doesn't want to be cooped up inside in the house, being alone right now. So I think he's just gonna grab a quick shower and then we will head off somewhere. I think I'd like to switch this door around so that it opens up that way instead. <laughs> Looks a bit better, I think. So let's go ahead and check the food supplies once he's done. Yeah, it's not too bad. We don't really need to fill that up a lot. So Jake is doing well. And he, well, he could uh, do with some more food. So let's just add that as well. <laughs> That's a nice animation. <laughs> I must, uh, must have put put it in an odd spot. <laughs> well, it works. Okay, so let's actually go to, yeah, 290 Main Street. Jason has arrived. And this is something that Jason has been thinking about for a little while because he knows that uh, Nassim and Abhijit have bonded a bit about uh, video games and um, I think that he's going to try to give Nassim a peace offering <laughs> and uh, buy some video games for him and see if they can play those together. So he's going to go into the um, video game store here and buy something. Looks like we have Orlando here. Okay, so yeah, he would definitely get the the sports FIFA one. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the one he's gonna get. So yeah, let's go with that. Because uh, he knows that uh, Nassim is very into sports, of course. <laughs> Nice, okay. So, let's see if we have some people around that Jason can uh, talk to. Why don't you greet Orlando? Your uh, extended family after all, so. Let's see if those two get along. So far so well, I think. Yeah, they actually seem to get along really well. That's interesting. I actually also think that uh, he's going to greet uh, Ophelia. They know of each other, even though they don't perform at the same weddings. They uh, actually know that um, whenever they don't get a gig, the other one usually gets it instead. <laughs> so they're a bit... Um, of rivals in the neighborhood, um, but uh, friendly rivals, that is. 
So I think that uh, even though there's quite a big age difference, they might actually get, get along quite well too. <laughs> Looks like Jason started to try to talk about politics, but uh, Ophelia instantly cut him off. <laughs> she did not enjoy that. He can greet Nina. She is actually the ex-girlfriend of his best friend. So, uh, yeah. I think he wants to be polite and uh, greet her when he sees her. <laughs> Looks like they're talking a bit about um, space and aliens. <laughs> Nina, of course, raised two alien children. And um, even though she doesn't really tell people a lot about it, she actually also has uh, an ancestor who is an alien. So I think that she has uh, very interesting things to say about that. Then Jason is also going to greet Marilina Brunig, who is um, the, um, well, colleague, sort of, of uh, Andreas. She runs the daycare. So um, she has actually very recently also took care of um, Irene. So they have that to bond over. Looks like uh, Marilina is thinking a bit about uh, the recent passing of her Cocker Spaniel. But they move on to more happier subjects. So that's nice. Jason tells her a bit about his music. We have Danielle Lillard. They haven't met. So they are quite close in age, I think. And uh, Danielle is a pretty cool person. So I think that uh, <laughs> if they got along, she's someone who Jason would uh, enjoy being friends with. So far, so well. This seems to be a good day for Jason. He hasn't met anyone who he doesn't um, get along with instantly, so that's good. I think that um, Andrea's personality has rubbed off on him a bit. Seeing as he is a popularity sim, he does want to get along with people. And I think that uh, she has taught him quite a bit about being charismatic. <laughs> okay, yeah. Danielle is... Um, a romance sim, and she talks about uh, her conquests, I guess. <laughs> They're actually very close to becoming friends. Let's see if they have the same humor. Yeah, that went well. They actually became friends. That's nice. Okay, then. Um, I think that that was uh, all of the people on this slot that he wanted to meet. Let's just grab a little bit of groceries. Yeah, that should be enough. Very good. And then I think it's time for Jason to drive home again. Amar Miller. Yeah, I think that that might be um, one of the newly randomized police officers since I have made so many playable. <laughs> nice to see you. Okay, so we got some pop-ups that uh, apparently not only Irene is sick, Nassim is also sick with the flu. So I'm gonna have to adjust my spreadsheet for that as well. There we go. So Jason is going to bring the food into the house. And he's quite hungry by now actually. So let's have some lunch. Let's see. Maybe he wants to grill something. Oh, but it's going to be serve, isn't it? Yeah, let's just have lunch instead. Let's go with the TV dinner. I think that suits him quite well. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think that um, Nassim is arriving from school. He brought a friend home, apparently. Regina Beckett, I see. So he's just gonna um, put his homework away. I just wanna fix his bed as well. Oh, 
This needs to be moved up, I see. <laughs> There we go. Okay then. Um, yeah, I think that you're gonna just say goodbye to her. Uh, but um, apparently Jason is out here cleaning up a bit. But I think that um, now that Nassim is home, I think that Jason is going to show him the game that he bought for them. Yeah, he looks very happy to, to get it and uh, Jason is going to tell him a bit about it and that it is uh, a gift for him. <laughs> looks like he's very skeptical. But yeah, he looks happy at least to get it. Turns out this is a good conversation then and <laughs> well... Looks like Nazim is a bit on the fence, but yeah. I mean, amusingly, I think that these two are quite similar. <laughs> they have a very similar personality, so... If they can just get over all the history between them, I think that they will get along really well, actually. <laughs> so let's see if we can make that happen. And Jason is also sick with the flu now. Let's see if we can get the whole family sick. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so I think that they are just going to sit down and play together. And let's see how that goes. No, no, don't watch. I want you to join. Yeah, I think this is a very good idea because um, Nasim can take out his frustrations on the game. Looks like uh, Nasim won that one. And uh, that's not very surprising because he has gotten a lot of practice from playing with his biological father, of course. <laughs> but Jason is doing his best and um, I think that this will be a very good bonding time for them. Okay, so it looks like Jason has had enough. And um, yeah, he's coughing a bit. But I think that... Um, I'm gonna have him uh, practice a bit on his guitar. And I think that I'm gonna have J Nassim also just sit in the, on the couch and play because um, normally I might have sent him out to the basketball hoop to play, but uh, since he's sick, I think it's better to just let him rest a bit. Perhaps he can uh, sit down and do his homework later. No, oh, looks like Jake wants to watch the game. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> okay, so Andrea is back home from work. Oh, and it looks like Irene brought home a friend. So it is actually Kian Miguel. So that's very nice. Uh, that is um, Amin's son. So that would be very fun if, um, if those two could become friends, seeing as Jason and Amin are best friends. I like that a lot. Oh, I think that uh, Irene is going to hug her, but she's going to put her homework away first, so that is fine. I think that um, Edith is going to stop and uh, greet Andrea when she sees her. It looks like they haven't really met, but uh, they have quite a bit in common. So I think that she's just going to stop by and say hi, say that she has heard a lot about Andrea and that she really admires what she does in the community. And Andrea is going to say, well, that she's very <laughs> grateful for that praise. And they are, of course, talking about the Watcher, seeing as they are both faithful sims and that is uh, at the very forefront of Edith's mind, I think. <laughs> Cool, very cool. Um, you don't have to do that though. Um, where did Kian run off to? He's in here. So why don't you talk a bit together? And uh, eventually Andrea is going to say goodbye to Edith. So Andrea isn't 
really hungry, but the others are. I think that uh, I'm gonna serve up some... Can she make grandma's comfort soup? No, she can't. Um, yeah, so I think that she's just gonna make some nice and comforting soup anyway to hopefully help with the sickness. Um, well, I guess tomato soup is gonna work well. She doesn't have that much cooking. But Jason has less, so let's go with it. Okay, so Nassim is done with his uh, game. I think he's just gonna sit down and do his homework for now. And these two are getting along very well. So they're talking about school right now, it looks like. I think actually that uh, Irene is going to brag a bit. <laughs> She's a bit bratty like that, but um, she's very proud of her mother. <laughs> so let's see if Kian's into that. Oh, she actually bragged about Andrea teaching her to talk. <laughs> That's very cute. I like that. And apparently Kian didn't mind that either. That's nice. Yeah, she's very bored. Maybe, yep, got the whole family. So let's see if they can get cured today or if they will have to um, go to the hospital tomorrow. Looks like Andrea might have burned the food actually, so that's not gonna help. I'm gonna remake another meal. Now she can actually serve dinners. Let's do that instead. Yep. Kian is sick too. <laughs> oh well. It is autumn after all, so... That... Um, that works out. I think she's gonna say goodbye to him, even though they didn't become friends. I think it's... Um, she is very tired. Um, okay, apparently she didn't finish cooking. Let's just send Irene up to her bed to sleep for a little bit. And uh, yeah. I think that Nassim can just um, apparently not rest there. <laughs> Let's just lounge a bit on the sofa until food is ready. And uh, I think that Jason wants to freshen up a bit. Hmm, interesting. I think that might be a bit in the way. How about now? Yeah, now you can get to it. Perfect. So Andrea, what are you doing? I want you to cook, please. You're out here with the dog. <laughs> Um, why don't you just go to bed? And what are you doing? Lounge, please. Okay, so Nassim is healthy again. I can mark him as green. Oh, nice. And I got a cooking seal too. That's nice. Good. So now Irene is going to bed. I think that she's interrupting herself by coughing. I think that's the problem. Please don't cough into the food, Andrea. Okay, nice. You didn't burn it this time. Perfect. Yeah, so now the family can eat. Andrea might as well eat as well. Even though she's not that hungry, she's uh, a little bit hungry. So that's fine. Looks like uh, Andrea has uh, questioned Nassim a little bit about his uh, romantic life, <laughs> seeing as she ha always has romance on her mind. And uh, she knows that Nassim and uh, Julie have started to see each other a bit, so she's probably asking a bit about her. 
smells yummy. Eat that, please. <laughs> yeah, so Nassim and uh, Jason are actually sitting next to each other and talking a bit. And looks like uh, they're moving up a little bit on the daily relationship at least, so... <laughs> Things are at least moving in the right direction. That's good. Okay, I think that that is fine for now. Irene can use the bathroom and then go downstairs to eat dinner too. Okay, so Nassim is a knowledge sim. So he's very into learning new things. And he wants to get a body skill. I think that he might actually call up uh, Dismus and meet up at the the gym perhaps for some uh, afternoon or well some <laughs> evening gym time let's actually borrow Jason's car and uh, drive to the the health center Okay, so Nassim has arrived at the lot and uh, I'm actually thinking that I might create a group for him because uh, it would be fun to invite some more of the guys his age, I think. So let's just name it uh, the dudes. Just to make sure that I'm not missing any anyone, I'm actually going to go ahead and use my spreadsheet. I'm going to sort it by teen and I'm going to sort it by male. So let's see, it's going to be Hugo, Laurent, Nero, Nassim, Jason, Hector, Archie and Dismas. I actually think I missed Hector. Is he in here somewhere? I actually think that Nassim might not know him. <laughs> Well, fair enough, he grew up very recently. They might have just missed each other. But somehow it fits that he's not going to be invited. Um, yeah. Hector has always been the odd one out in his um, oddity. <laughs> I don't know. It just fits in somehow. Yeah, let's just go with these ones. And let's... Uh, invite group over for let's make it for an outing let's see how that works out for us yep the dudes Dismas and Laurent will come to your outing the others might not like you enough <laughs> we're out already don't have phones or wear asleep well okay sure Dismas and Laurent and Lawrence, that might be a bit more manageable anyway, so... <laughs> Let's see when they arrive. I think that those two are the ones that um, he's the closest friends with, so... Yep, here is Dismas. Looks like Laurent is on his way over there. <laughs> that was a bit of a funny greeting for those two. <laughs> Great. So, let's just uh, joke around a little bit. There we go. So let's just have them uh, get into the pool. I'm gonna make them all selectable. And where did this mess run off to? There he is. Yeah, of course he's on his way to the treadmill. <laughs> Just um, dive. Looks like they can play Marco Polo together. That's good. <laughs> Let's do another dive then. Okay, so... Let's just get them up out of the pool. We haven't even greeted him. Yeah, do that, please. 
let's uh, joke a bit for, with him then. And let's just stand around for a little bit. Yeah, go dive. That's fine. Let's see if we can push this up a little bit. It would be nice if uh, we could at, at least get it to fun so that we could have a bit more time. <laughs> of course, this was is going to take every opportunity to be <laughs> joking around. Oh no, I don't think we're going to make it. A shame. Mm, I was hoping that they might become best friends. Uh, because that would probably push it up a bit, but uh, yeah, no. Nope. <laughs> now they became best friends, of course. <laughs> oh well. Let's just have them uh, go upstairs and use the treadmills for a bit. Ah, uh, I actually think that they are maxed out on fun, most of them, so um, let's just uh, have them work out in here instead. Yeah, I think that Lauren has had enough. He might be heading off soon. Yeah, I think that's quite enough for Nassim. He's going to take a shower and then drive back home. Okay, so Nassim is getting home again. Looks like he could eat again after the gym. So he's gonna grab another plate. And uh, Irene is done with her dinner. So I think that, what was her hobby again? Science. I think she's gonna watch some TV then. Jason is cleaning up a little bit, looks like. Um, I think that he's gonna try to work on some uh, more friendships. He has already lost his friendship with Danielle because time moves so quickly in my neighborhood <laughs> when I slow down time. So I'm actually gonna push his social down a little bit so he can talk for a little bit longer. And I'm gonna have him call up Danielle and see if they can become friends after all. Okay, so she's watching the weather channel. Um, I actually think that that might be science, right? It is, yeah. So let's change it back to the weather station. For some reason, when you start watching the TV, uh, it doesn't push up the fun very much. But if you switch a channel, it will sort of fix itself. <laughs> so that's a tip if you haven't noticed that before. So there is a knock on the door. So Andrea is going to go outside and uh, greet whoever it is. And it turns out to be Meadow who has come over to visit. So Andrea is of course uh, happy to see her, uh, but she doesn't really know wh why she's here. So she's just going to invite Meadow inside and ask her to help herself to a cup of coffee. And Meadow is going to gladly accept that. So Meadow uh, tells Andrea that um, she's here because she wanted to her, talk to her about an uh, offer she got. And she's not really sure about what to do with it. And Andrea is of course saying that, uh, go ahead and tell me. And uh, Meadow lets her know that um, Marilina... Brunig has been in contact and uh, asked if she wanted to become a caretaker of the kids at the um, daycare center instead. And uh, Andra is asking Meadow, sort of, is that what you want to do with your life? Do you want to take care of that young children? Don't you want to uh, care for a bit older kids and, and teach them more things? But Meadow says that she has always loved children. And uh, she, she really would like to work more with young kids if she could. So Andra is sort of uh, digesting all of that. And uh, 
is sort of thinking a bit to herself as she's uh, standing in the kitchen. And she invites Meadow to sit down at the kitchen table. Looks like Jason is <laughs> exhausted and pretty upset about it, so let's just send him to bed. Um, okay, looks like uh, Nassim is talking to Dismas in the bathroom. Yeah, and Irene is just going to go to bed right now as well. So they're sitting down at the kitchen table to have a more serious chat. And uh, oh, okay, Meadow needs to rush off to the bathroom first, apparently. So Andrea is just going to put away those leftovers. Yeah, okay, no, apparently Nassim was in the way here. But let's um, send him to bed as well so that Meadow can use the bathroom. And apparently the dog is in here as well. Yeah, okay, let's just do this. Now we should be able to... Yeah, good. <laughs> yep, so Meadow is just going to use the bathroom. And then she's going to sit here. And Andra is just contemplating what she should do now. If Meadow wants to switch jobs, she will have to find someone else who can take care of the young, younger children at the school and uh, who can also be groomed into her successor. She hadn't really thought that Meadow was the perfect candidate for that, but at least it was someone that she could um, teach and uh, she has the potential, of course. So... Um, Andra is telling her that, uh, well, if that is what you want to do with your life and you want to take care of younger children, then of course you should uh, go for that. Um, ambition is always good. And you should follow your heart. You don't want to end up in a profession where you're not happy. You should always try to strive to do what you want to do with your life. So Meadow is telling her that, um, that she's very happy that uh, Andrea's taking it so well and that uh, if that's the way she thinks that she's going to go ahead and accept the position. And uh, Andrea is telling her good luck and uh, it's not like she's going to outer space. She's going to be in the neighborhood still, only at another workplace. So they're still going to be colleagues. They're not going to be aliens to each other. <laughs> So Andrea is, of course, also telling Meadow that if she knows about anyone that would like to fill in for her and have her previous position, that she would be very happy to to get the recommendation because uh, she would need to get someone fast into that uh, job as well. There's always kids around that needs to be taken care of and someone that needs to look after them. And uh, if uh, Andrea is alone... Um, then she won't get to um, have enough breaks and uh, it will be very straining for us, her as well. And uh, of course Meadow is promising to look into it and try to see if she knows anyone who would be interested in the position as well. So Andrea is going to give Meadow a friendly hug and tell her good luck and uh, that it was very kind of her to come, in, come to her in person to let her know. And Meadow is of course saying that uh, of course she wanted to come in person. Um, it was the decent thing to do, she thought, and she, she genuinely wanted to have Andrea's input as well. So they're gonna say goodbye. Take care. And uh, Andrea has a lot to think about. She's going to go upstairs and try to have a relaxing bath before bed. And she's going to have to try to come up with um, a good candidate for the position now that Meadow is gone. Yeah, okay, I, uh, I actually have someone in mind, but it um, doesn't look like... Uh, Andrea knows that person. So, um, yeah. There we go. So Andrea is going to curl up in bed 
with Jason, who is apparently healthy again. Very good. And they're going to end their day together. Oh, looks like Jason only just uh, woke up. It was one second left, so <laughs> let's just bump that down and send him back to bed. <laughs> There we go. So Jason and Andrea are going to sleep and uh, the rest of the family is asleep as well. So that was the end of the Cormier family for this Monday. And uh, let's see if... Uh, I think Andrea is still sick and Irene as well. Let's see if they can sleep their illness off or if they will be sick tomorrow as well. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the episode and thank you so much for watching it. See you next time. Take care. Bye.